is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the iRacing V8 Supercar Official Series, round number one of season one, 2019. My name is Zach Hamlin. Joining me in the commentary booth on SimSpeed TV tonight is David Haynes. And we are very excited to be joining you from the mecca of Australian motorsport, Mount Panorama, Bathurst. We will be here tonight for our 33 grueling laps 
for all of our competitors here this evening, of which we have 31 on file to take us through this uh, extraordinarily long race this evening, which will see us past the hour mark this evening. And uh, David, we've already seen the uh, track temperatures darting around a little bit in this early morning session. And uh, with these guys not quite used to uh, possibly racing in these dynamic weather conditions with the new uh, day-night feature on iRacing, um, do you think this could really throw things up in the air for a couple of the drivers in such a long race this afternoon? Definitely could. It's partly cloudy weather conditions out there means that sometimes there'll be direct sun on the circuit, heating up all of that black asphalt. Sometimes there'll be some cloud cover, a little bit of breeze out there, 16 kilometers an hour, can cool it off pretty quickly and also the heat soaks into the ground. So the track temperature can swing pretty rapidly and we know that has a very, very significant effect on how much grip is available to these drivers and that has an effect on the balance of the car as well. Absolutely. Now, luckily for uh, the uh, drivers, as we just see Scott Soloski on screen, uh, unfortunately take a hit into the dipper there, and uh, he's ruined his second lap there. But we have um, seen the, the track temperatures starting around just a little bit, not too much. So I feel that um, all of our competitors this evening should get roughly uh, the same conditions for their laps here this afternoon. At the moment, we have Sam Sutton on top of the leaderboard. He's got Thomas McMillan just behind him and uh, Wayne Burke um, as well, who has uh, just swapped over to one performance racing from uh, Synergy Sim Racing. He puts himself up into position number three at the moment. Corey Preston's just popped himself up into fourth position. But um, we've got some really big names in here this afternoon uh, or this evening, and uh, it's gonna be really difficult to see who might take this one out. We've got the likes of Sam Sutton, uh, Wayne Burke, Corey Preston, Jackson Suslin Harlow. We've also got uh, Ian Ford, Dane Warren, uh, and returning champion Marlon J. McMullen as well in the field, although much further down than we would probably expect him at the moment. And Dane Warren, just as I say his name, Mr. Fast himself, he's uh, got himself a seat in a uh, F4 test day, uh, does Mr. Dane Warren after winning the VSR championship earlier this year. And at the moment, he's showing to continue speed as uh, he's popped himself on the top of the leaderboard at the moment ian ford comes across the line and uh unfortunately not quite enough for him but he still puts himself up in the fifth position which is uh definitely a good starting position for this very long race and we will take you through our grid now ladies and gentlemen as uh qualifying has just concluded dane warren gets in there at the last moment with a 204.2 and will lead away from pole position this evening he'll be joined on the front row by sam sutton from ttl esports Brady Myers and Thomas McMillan will make up row number two. They'll be joined closely by Ian Ford and Wayne Burke on row number three. Corey Preston will start out of position number seven and Jackson Suslin Harlow will start from position number eight. That's a very feisty row back there as well. Brett Loxton, he's going to be looking to uh, better his performance of second in the championship last season up into first hopefully he's gonna to have to claw his way back from ninth at the moment and jordan ross rounds out the top then we have michael cracknell in position number 11 kyle stokes starts from 12th brett cananzi a local drifter in 13th position daniel williams a nice job from him up in the brian borg uh, another man who has changed teams pursuit sim racing starts from 15th marlon j mcmullen will start from 16th position Scott Soloski from 17th, Crix Coxhead, and Ryder from 8th, 19th. Those guys have gotten together before, and that should be a good throw in Zach Baker, and uh, that's going to be a good race down in the uh, lower midfield there. Craig Jones, Benjamin Smith, 21st and 22nd. Brenton O'Brien in 23rd. Guy Leach starts from 24th position. And uh, to round out our grid, this Jamie McKnight, 25th. Greg Sharp, 26th. Starting a lot lower than I'm sure he would be hoping uh, but a very close back from 27th, I'm sure. 28th goes to Brendan Jackson. James Duckworth, another man we've seen charging through the field previously, starts from 29th, so some work for do, to do for him. And David Miller round out this 31-car field as they stare to Hell Corner, one of the uh, most difficult corners on this course, and it is the first one. And uh, the man who is going to have it all to do is Dane Warren Sam. Just behind here, up here at Mount Panorama, and we are going for round one, season 2019, 
and it is go and away goes Dane Warren good start for him on the inside line Sam Sutton also a good start but uh, not quite enough to get alongside him Brady Myers does a good job to get past Thomas McMillan as they come through turn number one pretty clean as they start coming down mountain straight now and Couple of guys going two wide, three wide back there, keeping it fairly clean for the time being. Dane Warren just going on the defensive there as they come into turn number one. And a couple of more cars there going two by two. But everyone doing a very nice job to get through here nice and cleanly, which is what we like to see. 60 minute plus race this evening, so they've got plenty of time to sort themselves later on. A little bit of uh, contact just coming up through the car from some cars in the midfield there. I think uh, Chris Coxhead just getting very close to the rear of uh, Scott Soloski there. Managing to keep it all together though and uh, starting to just sort themselves out single file now as they come over the top of the mountain and down into Skyline. Here comes Dane Warren down through the S's. One of the most scary places you could possibly go through, especially in a V8 supercar because those things are just dancing all the way through there. And look at that shot. What a great shot of all those cars coming through Skyline there. And now down into Forest Elbow. Dane's got a little bit of a breather here. Man, that doesn't have a breather is uh, Brady Myers there. He's got Thomas McMillan right behind him. We can see all these cars filing through very nicely. So great job from the field here to get away nice and cleanly. And uh, Dane's got a nice uh, little getaway here. So see if he's... Um, going to be able to continue to put on the performance that we've seen him put on so routinely in this series which is just to stay out in the front as long as he can keep that pit strategy oh Luxton getting a little bit uh locked up on the rear brakes there as he comes down through the chase and uh manages to keep it all together though Brett Luxton we've seen have some pretty wayward moments throughout his time but usually he manages to keep it all together he's tucked up right now behind Corey Preston he's got Jordan Ross just in behind him as well and uh, that's a spicy little pack there quite a few great packs we've got some excellent drivers in the uh, in the field to see and uh, man that hasn't moved as much as I would have expected Ian Ford still going well in fifth hasn't moved up or down but still keeping it nice and close to that lead pack ahead looks like uh, Wayne Burke just behind him just starting to fall off that pack a little bit, but still keeping in touch and going to be getting that draft as uh, as they come down Conrod straight. Yeah, everyone's staying mostly in the order that they qualified. The couple little losers through the first quarter of the first lap. Jackson Susan Harlow recently uh, with TTL Esports dropped two positions on the first lap. We saw Zach Baker get all the way out on the grass for Zach Bates for ZB Racing on the first lap as well so he's down three positions but other than that a lot of the field staying in line and in the order that they qualify just shows how close and how evenly matched this field is yeah absolutely i think you're right i think jackson suslin harlow is uh really looks like he's the only man who's really suffered other than zach baker as you said who has fallen a couple of positions but everyone else has uh kept it pretty tight you can see on screen now Oh, Thomas McMillan getting very close to the wall on the exit there as he's trying to hunt down Brady Myers and he's been hanging on to the back of that car very closely since the beginning of the race and looks like he wants to uh, get that all-star motorsports car past great looking car this evening in that very plain just black and white livery very nice looking car and uh, not unfortunately enough to move uh, Brady Myers out of the way who uh, we saw nearly won a race here a couple of seasons ago but he was in the lead doing well I think it was about five or six laps left and he uh, or maybe eight or so and he unfortunately blew the engine on that occasion he's still got a couple of positions but he does have a teammate up ahead of him so might be able to uh, work his way from that final podium on final position on the podium up to the top McMillan just getting a little bit sideways on the exit as he clips a little bit of dirt coming down mountain straight off hell corner now and dane warren has a one second advantage out at the front of this field the next four, four cars are all separated by just 1.2 seconds so he's really got a nice little lead here but ian ford's another man who's looking pretty fast and uh, looking like he wants to make his way through this uh top three or four cars here 
rapidly poking the nose out half a car width to the inside, letting Thomas McMillan in front know that he's there, showing him that Speed Cafe logo on the bonnet as well. And they are all staying in line, and they may well do for some time until either the tyres start wearing down or there is a very wide pit stop window for this race. Some of these guys might feel like they're being held up, might try and come in a little bit earlier. We probably won't see that for at least another 10 laps. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think there's actually a, a fuel restriction on the race this evening. So these guys are going to be able to run extremely deep uh, into this race. So I think it'll really come down to when these guys want to take some tires um, and use that up. We have noticed uh, the, the track temperature starting to notch up. Now this, uh, this track, we will talk a little bit about this uh, new timing and day night feature that iRacing have introduced because it's absolutely um, it's absolutely game changing in the way that we run these races now. So we just watched Zach Baker uh, having a little bit of a move on Brenton O'Brien, but the track temperature has already risen three degrees and Zach Baker now just pulling out onto the inside there. He's going to go for a move through the chase here, see if he can stick it out. Brenton O'Brien going to hold it tough around the outside there and keep the inside line. Zach Baker late on the brakes. Almost uh, giving Brenton O'Brien a little bit of a rub there, but they stay as they are. Um, now, this race started uh, at uh, local time uh, in the server. It was 7.37 a.m. Uh, I think the race started eight minutes ago. It's now 7.58. So it's 7.50 in the morning in this race, ladies and gentlemen. So as I'm sure you can imagine, we're expecting it to get just a little bit hotter uh, as that morning sun starts to rise and starts to bake the track a little more. Now we will have cloud cover coming over and uh, possibly interfering with that as well, but up three degrees track already uh, since the guys entered the server. So it's definitely gonna be something to monitor uh, and it's something these guys are going to have to be thinking about when they do consider pit strategy and when they're going to come in and get the top um, because the way that the tires react in this first half of the stint as the track temperature gets higher uh, doesn't necessarily translate to how the second stint might feel um, you know as, as the temperatures rise David. Exactly and a little bit of cloud cover temporarily reducing the track temperatures could potentially supercharge an undercut if someone uh, managed to win that little lottery, get some very quick lap times in on new tyres in a cool track, if indeed the sun is maybe for just five minutes blocked by some cloud. All kinds of things could happen out of the control and out of the prediction of these drivers and teams. The drivers have to be adaptable and they have to just drive to what's underneath them and what the weather brings. Yeah, that's actually a great point you make, David, about um, about the undercut there. And and uh, I know I've even been doing a, a few races uh, this week and even noticed that in the qualifying sessions, um, sometimes you can have cloud cover come across and your first lap and your second lap can be completely different. Um, so it really is going to throw, uh, hopefully, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a mix into this race for us this evening. Although at the moment, uh, there are some little packs starting to form and everyone's looking pretty good at the moment. We can see on our timing here. Oh, and we've got a car off there. I think that was Scott Soloski uh, who just managed to uh, just run a little bit deep into the chase there and it's now going to be passed by Chris Coxhead. And hopefully he's been able to clear that slowdown all the way. We will see as uh, they come down the straight here. Riley Blythe in there as well. Brett Cananzi now being overtaken uh, by, that's Brian Borg there. So nice job from Brian Borg and uh, Mullen, Mullen, or sorry, uh, yeah, Mullen McMullen might actually try and capitalize out of this as well as, uh, as they come down into turn number two here. He's gonna have to go around the outside though, unless he can really pull up that, uh, that Holden Commodore a little bit further along. Very late on the brakes, taking the wide line very hard out on that outside line there and unfortunately Marlon McMullen previous uh, series champion here not able to get it done Chris Coxhead has to uh, has to let one go to Soloski and uh, Riley Blythe looking to capitalize out of that can't make anything happen though and uh, that's Craig uh, Jones just sitting in behind those guys as well so these are all guys uh, we would expect normally to be fighting up a little further in the field uh, which just really goes to show you this is currently the battle for uh, 18th, uh, 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th for these guys. So that just goes to show you the fantastic strength um, that we have in the field this evening. Only uh, a 3600 
uh, strength of field, but I do have to say that that feels a little bit undervalued uh, given the quality of drivers that we have in the field this evening. And Brett Canenzi just looking to struggle a little bit with his car at the moment, just falling off uh, Brian Borg already. And uh, just having a look further up the field, it looks like Corey Preston and Brett Loxton having a go there and Thomas McMillan and Brady Myers also coming very close. Corey Preston gets overtaken by Loxton around the outside. That's a fantastic move there, uh, I believe, from Brett Loxton. So great job from him to uh, get that move done. McMillan still having a look here on Brady Myers. Just can't quite get close enough, though, to make anything happen there. But um, that All-Stars Motorsports car definitely looking very strong. And uh, be interesting to see what happens if he can get himself into a little bit of a TTL sandwich here. Yeah, indeed. He's looking this way, that way, trying to find an advantage somewhere. But Brett Loxton, a little bit further back, is now up two positions. So that's one of the better movers in the top part of the, the pack there. And all the cars getting a little bit further spaced out, but still relatively close together as one of the TTL cars has a solid wiggle through Griffin's bend. Yeah, it looks like we've only got uh, really a couple of cars in no man's land. I think Kyle Stokes is a little bit out on his own, but we've still got a, a car just a second or so up the road. As uh, we've got a slow car there, that was Craig Jones. Or I think Soloski just got passed by Jones there. So, so something's happened to Soloski again because he was ahead of Coxhead and Blythe. Um, and he's, yeah, he's. you can see with the aggression that he's taking through that car, he seems very frustrated. Um, just carrying a little bit too much speed over the top of the mountain there and losing some time to Jones just ahead of him. Look who's, at the uh, balance just... on that car for Solosi though. He locked up the rears uh, earlier into the chase. That's what initially lost him the position to, uh, I want to say, Chris Coxhead. And now we saw the tails wagging on throttle as well. So something with the balance of that car for Scott Solosi not quite working out for him in the early phase. Yeah, he might have to um, start playing around with those bars a little bit and just get himself a little bit uh, more comfortable in that car because we are only 15 minutes into this race, six laps out of 33. Uh, so still a very long way to go for Scott Soloski and he'll want to make sure that he's keeping nice and cool and comfortable behind the wheel of that all-star motorsports car. A man who is looking pretty cool, but uh, maybe a little bit fiery up the front. Thomas McMillan still struggling to find a way past these TTL cars ahead of him. Ian Ford had dropped off just a little bit that last lap. He's managed to claw it back this time around um, and just pulled back a tenth on those guys. So a little bit of ebb and flow between these guys as, um, as we talk about so often. All these cars, different guys and different teams like cars set up differently. So... We're going to see cars losing and gaining time on different areas of the track. And uh, looks like Ian Ford is really strong down the straights and in the in the second half of the lap where he's able to claw it back. Over the top of the mountain, though, I have noticed him uh, just starting to fall a little bit behind. We're on board now with Ian Ford as we see Scott Soloski getting very close to the outside wall on the uh, entry into the cutting there. But uh, Ian Ford just... Over the top of this mountain section here, you can just see the car just starting to fall away just a little bit from the guys up ahead. But um, as he starts coming down the mountain and down the straight sections of the track, he really does start to uh, claw that gap way back in. And uh, Ian Ford is obviously an extremely experienced driver in these V8 supercars, and he might be doing a little bit of fuel saving uh, as well, try and go on a bit of a different strategy here. We have seen Ian do uh, some pretty fantastic work with fuel numbers previously, and I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him work with something like that again. He's managed to keep it pretty close over the top of the mountain this time, though, as uh, just got an onboard here with Brady Myers looking back at Thomas McMillan because uh, McMillan's pretty close, and he's been very close lap after lap, but luckily for Brady, he's got Sutton ahead of him, who's... Uh, not only his teammate, but also giving him a little bit of a toe, which is just slightly hindering the progress of McMillan. But McMillan's going to go down the inside on this attempt. Not quite. Very, very, uh, almost thought he was going to go for it there. He was very uh, nosy. Didn't quite go for the move, though. And, uh, whoa, Susan Harlow getting uh, a little bit of a bump there from, I believe, that's uh, um, Cracknell, Michael Cracknell. So... A little bit of biffo between those guys and uh, 
Paul Stokes, I think, just uh, around those guys as well. They've got a bit of a battle pack happening behind them as well. Um, I think that's Brian Borg chasing down uh, Daniel Williams as they come down into Hell Corner. Kananzi and McMullen just behind them. Now, McMullen is uh, not doing particularly well at the moment. Oh, McMillan and Ford side by side. So McMillan's had a bit of a mistake here. And uh, Ian Ford going around the outside and you can see just once you get in that off camber section of that the outside at turn number two there just really kills your momentum and unfortunately Ian Ford not able to make that work because he had the run on McMillan there so McMillan now with a little bit of work to do to get himself back up to those TTL guys Dane Warren has slowly just been eking out that advantage just 1.7 seconds is the gap at the front of the race now but he's um, just been doing an absolutely astute job to pull away from the field as it stands. Yeah, exactly. And you mentioned maybe Ian Ford's trying to do something with the fuel numbers, and we expect that these guys will have to take about 55 litres of fuel at their pit stop to get to the end. They fill at about three or, or some litres per second. So if he could save five, six litres, it'd be a big ask, but it would save him two seconds at his pit stop potentially. With how closely bunched they are, a little bit of an undercut, a little bit of pit lane advantage, could potentially go two or three positions. That's right, and if he comes in a little bit early as well, um, get some fresh tyres quicker, uh, that could also help him uh, make even more of a, an undercut there, as we've seen a lot throughout this series. Uh, once you get that fresh rubber on, you can typically pick up a couple of seconds in, uh, in lap time on some occasions, and around Mount Panorama, on, uh, oh, Loxton's had a bit of a lock up there and runs wide and through the chase there. He's going to have to clear that uh, slowdown and has lost a bunch of positions. Looks like he's lost out to uh, Jordan Ross and Corey Preston there, and he might even lose out as well uh, to Cracknell. So Cracknell's gotten through, and uh, Michael Cracknell actually doing a fantastic job in this race he's right now. Oh, has his elbows out there with Kyle Stokes, though. A big lockup still turns it into Susan Harlow, and they're door-to-door -door there, Zach. Yeah, very nicely done there from Susan Harlow picking it all up and Brian Borg in the background as well just getting a little bit of a slide on as uh, he was trying to come up alongside uh, I think that's Daniel Williams there so uh, and here we go Jordan Ross and Corey Preston side by side through turn number two Corey Preston has to take the wide line and that is uh, position done for Jordan Ross as they come up through the cutting now so nice job there by the Synergy Sim Racer and uh, he'll see if he can now move him up to his uh old teammate Wayne Burke and uh, try and latch himself onto the back of that train up the front there. He's got a little bit of a, a gap to make up though, about three, second, three seconds. But um, just noticing that uh, McMillan is now starting to just fall off the back of these two TTL cars now. Track temperature has come up once again to 28 degrees. Um, so definitely some strain starting to go through these tyres now. And I wonder if... Um, oh my goodness, that's a huge move! And that's going to be an accident! Surely not! Oh my goodness! Daniel Williams there pulling out everything he had to get that car stopped as Brian Borg went for a lunge through the skyline. And I have to say, Daniel Williams, uh, 11 out of 10. Well done, sir. That was amazing. I thought you were going into the ball for sure. There, we'll get a replay of that for you, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. And uh, we can see coming up the uh, up the hill here was very close. Brian Borg, very close to the back of him here. And uh, Daniel must have just lost a little bit of time through this these two left-handers here. So look pretty good through there. Maybe a little bit loose on the entry there. Just ran wide to the apex. And there we go, off the track. And, uh, well, Brian Borg kind of didn't have anywhere to go, really, and just managed to pick it up. And, uh, wow. Daniel Williams, great car control, albeit a uh, little bit sketchy, kept it on the tarmac and a very nice job, just loses one position. But uh, back to the live action for you. Oh, there's an accident in the field, in the back of the pack. I'll just see if I feel that's Brett Cananzi and Riley Blythe have uh, come together at turn number one. And uh, we'll see if we can get a uh, re... Oh, my God, and there's a car just gone off behind them as well. I think that's Greg Sharp in the Stealth Simforce car has uh, seen that checkup and gone, what the hell, and lost his concentration for a moment. So uh, looks like Riley Blythe got a bit of an over-under there as they came out 
of uh, Murray's corner. Oh, and just started to come across the back. So that happened well before the corner. And um, yeah, leave that. I'll probably have to have another look at that to make a call. But we'll leave that one for you, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, little bit of a bump and rub coming down the straight there. And we'll see this again. So, uh, yeah. Riley Bryce was really expecting Kananzi to go a little bit further towards the regular racing line. Uh, I think yeah. Nancy was then trying to hold life tight towards the inside line to compromise his exit off the corner. And the two of them have just met right at the start of the breaking zone for turn one. Yeah, well, it takes two to tango and sometimes, you know, uh, the minds aren't synced and the feet don't go the right way. But uh, some things do go right for people called Thomas McMillan is finally... He gets up alongside Brady Myers here. He's going to have to tough it out, though. Brady doing a great job to hold on to that position. Ian Ford now looking in the hunt behind. He's got a bit of a run here. Might try to go for the outside. Going to force McMillan to the inside. Ian Ford, will he go for a bit of an over-under here? He's going to just tuck in behind McMillan and let it slide. He doesn't want to succumb to Wayne Burke here. And he also doesn't want to let Sam Sutton get too far away either because that's really uh, taking these guys off the back of Mr. Sutton there. Wayne, we're on board with uh, Ian Ford now as he looks at the back of the uh, All-Star Motorsports car. And we do have our first pit stop as well. Brett Loxton, a man who uh, wants to try and change things up. He's going to have to go a long way on those tyres. Uh, I think he's going to have to go. And forward down the inside now at turn number two. Down the inside of McMillan. He makes it stick and, oh my goodness, who is it? It's Mr. Wayne Burke tries and he makes it through as well. So McMillan, after pushing so hard to get past those TTL cars, can't do it. And the men behind him say, I want to. And now on the exit of the cutting, just gets it all crossed up as he tries to save it. So he's going to have to really concentrate now. And uh, now Ian Ford and Wayne Burke have a bit of an opportunity here to uh, get themselves onto the podium and uh, really push themselves up in into uh, a, a nice position in this race. Yeah, McMillan was knocking on the door of being on the podium. He's now being shuffled back because he couldn't get the move done on Brady Myers. Now he's lost out to Ian Ford and Wayne Burke. And we watched Brian Borg and Marlon McMullen fighting out 12th place. Yeah, Brian Borg and Marlon McMullen have been fairly, uh, fairly tied up close to each other in this race so far. Not much uh, been really happening between the two of them. More of just been what's going on around them. Although um, McMullen has gotten past David Williams who uh, seems, or Daniel Williams, pardon me, uh, who seems like possibly was uh, a bit of a cork in the bottle for this little train here because Brian Borg and Marlon McMullen have really started to rocket away from him. And uh, Daniel Williams now just holding up uh, Craig Jones and Chris Coxhead behind as well. So a little bit of work there to do for the uh, series for the ex-series champion, previous series champion, Marlon McMullen. He's in 14th at the moment. There's still a bit of work to do. We'll see if we can uh, do anything from the pits there. But uh, as it stands at the moment, we've got some good little packs. We've got, obviously, our, our pack up the front. Brady Myers through to Thomas McNullen. Jordan uh, Ross and Michael Crack uh, and Corey Preston are all fairly well together as well. Uh, and Chris Coxhead all the way down through to Guy Leach all in uh, close contention. And they've got another pack of uh, Brenton O'Brien, Zach Baker, Thomas Hins, Mc Jamie McKnight and Brendan Jackson. Um, who are all fairly close as well. And uh, I've got to say, after 11 laps of racing, the uh, or 12 now even, well, we are on lap 12, uh, so it has been 11, but uh, the gaps between all of the uh, competitors this evening, not massively, uh, not too out of control, it has to be said. Everyone keeping a good pace, as uh, just seeing, I think that's uh, Ray Jones having to defend there from Scott Soloski in the back of the pack and he's got a teammate in Benjamin J. Smith just sitting behind them. Guy Leach is also looking pretty feisty as they come up through the cutting here. Yeah, but uh, Craig Jones definitely seems like he's the man on the back foot. And uh, looks like CMR have got a brand new livery for that car as well. And I have to say, the very striking looking livery there. Absolutely fantastic. Always good to see a uh, nice, different uh, and new design out there on the track and showing off their sponsors very nicely at the moment is Craig Jones as uh, we look up Skyline and ladies and gentlemen I have to say if you have never been to Bathurst and you have never walked down this section of the track 
uh, you have to do it at some point in your life because you just absolutely will not believe uh, the amount of elevation change that happens through this section of the track. It is just absolutely incredible. Uh, and then to try and walk back up, it will be out of breath without a doubt and your calves will be burning like crazy. Luckily for these gentlemen, though, they have 650 horsepower to uh, propel themselves through. And uh, a man who has propelled himself through to a uh, higher position is Corey Preston, who has managed to get past Jordan Ross, a man who had uh, passed him just previously. And Michael Cracknell also looking very strong on the tail end of these two guys as well. Also got Jackson Suslin Harlow just uh, having a bit of a look there on Kyle Stokes as uh, they come down the main straight as well. Daniel Williams, another man who has opted to come into the pit in, uh, in his car there. So a couple of cars now have pitted and uh, I'm actually interested to look at the uh, stats here for Brett Loxton. Uh, because he will be coming around very shortly for his first flying lap after making that pit stop, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it'll be a good indication as to what kind of times these guys uh, will be able to get out of some fresh rubber in this heat. It does have to be said, the uh, lap times, David, haven't really dropped off particularly that much since the beginning of the race. Yeah, we've got a battle here coming right into the cutting. One of the ASM cars and Leach have gotten past CMR. That was Craig Jones, wasn't it? Uh, yes. So Benjamin Smith and Guy Leach also getting through. Uh, I'm hoping that they're uh, they're probably wishing that a better livery would give them more speed. But it's setups that does that. He gets so wiggly and he's in the wall. A massive hit for Craig Jones. Got very unsettled over the top of the hill there. That was a big, big hit with the wall back. Yeah, that looked um, that looked very that looks like a, oh yeah that's a very sore looking car he's gonna have a lot of trouble uh keeping that thing on the track and i think he may uh would not be surprised to see craig jones in the pits at the end of this lap to try and uh, recover a little bit of damage i suspect that uh is going to be some suspension breaking stuff there pretty big hit we've got a replay on board with craig jones for you ladies and gentlemen just got a little, little bit unsettled on the exit there oh and if that doesn't break a Watts linkage in that car, I'm not sure what will, because that is a big side impact for Craig Jones. You can just see, as he comes over this right-hander here, already a little bit uh, taily, but uh, just loses it on that final part of that right-hander there. It's so very easy to do in uh, one of these vehicles. The Contact the rear of the car into the wall, then pivoted the front in as well. It was a, almost a two-piece impact damaging all uh, corners of the right hand side of the car yeah absolutely so um as we see him now indeed filing himself down onto the pit lane to uh try and recover some of that damage another man in the pit lane thomas hens uh who has been quietly plodding away up a few positions so far and uh he's going to come in and take service and see if he can make some more progress on that and uh Still at 28 degrees track temp, uh, we are at the moment. And I'm just having a look for old mate Brett Loxton. So Brett's actually had a pretty poor outlap. Uh, or, sorry, not so much outlap, but his, uh, his first flying lap after coming out of the pits was not a particularly great one. And uh, he also had a very long pit stop in general. So I think maybe uh, a few issues for Mr. Loxton that he would not be uh enjoying for sure daniel williams has also pitted so we'll see oh and guy leach has had a moment i think the same place that uh that uh craig jones just had a moment we'll get a, a replay on uh Cup Price racing replay for you so just having a look here and coming up oh and mick oh my goodness oh that's a huge moment so that's Benjamin J. Smith there, who's actually uh, had a moment coming out of on the exit of turn two, and he's just cleaned up the side of Guy Leach there, which is, oh, look at that, how aggressively that car turned on the curb. And Guy Leach did a great job to keep it all together, but you can tell uh, that car is crabbing like crazy, and he's uh, another man who will, I dare say, be in the pit lane uh, at the end of this lap to uh, once again repair that car. And yeah, he is traveling very slowly and that car is crabbing like crazy. 
Ryan Borg in the pit lane. Uh, I think he is the only person so far this lap to come into the pits. Everyone's still continuing to travel around as we just get to nearly the halfway point of this race now. One more lap and, uh, and a bit, and we will be at that halfway mark. So we will expect quite a few cars, I imagine, to uh, start coming in and uh, see how they go. Uh, but some what guys might choose to run it pretty long. Yeah, m that's my thoughts too now I think about it, because the sun keeps getting higher in the sky, track temperature's getting marginally hotter. If you're any of these guys like Brian, Paul, Zach Baker and others who hit it earlier, trying to carry your second set of tyres a longer distance, they could absolutely fall away from you as the track continues to heat up compared to someone taking a later pit stop. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, and something I've just noticed as well is that uh, the lap times have started to drop off. Just had the uh, had the Mercury tick up another degree, 29 track temperature at the moment. And uh, the lap times are now starting to suffer a little more considerably than they were before. Dane Warren, our race leader, who is uh, just doing a fantastic job up at the head of the field right now with a 3.8 second lead. Uh, to Sam Sutton behind him. His last lap was a 2.062, which was uh, the second fastest lap on the track. His fastest lap uh, was a 2.050. So we're now at 1.2 seconds down and the leader of the race, Dane Warren, is in the pit. So this is really interesting. Just runs a little bit wide through the, uh, through the entry there. And it seems like a few guys are coming in. Ian Ford, Sam Sutton, Wayne Burke decides to stay out. Thomas McMillan in the pit lane as well. So, quite a few guys. And Jordan Ross has got, yeah, yeah, Jordan Ross has gotten through on Corey Preston. He's gone off the track at Murray's Corner. And that's let, I think that might be Michael Cracknell through as well. So, Michael Cracknell doing a great job. We'll just get a replay. He was fighting pretty hard there, I think, uh, with uh, Jordan Ross there with Corey Preston. So, we have it on screen for you now, ladies and gentlemen, coming down into uh, Murray's corner and... Oh, he's going to clip the grass on the outside or just run a bit deep. Seems for Corey Preston. Just ran a little bit too deep. He might have picked up just a little bit of the grass on the outside All there. All these tricks by Jordan fight. Ross going into the pit entry. That might have just taken his focus away from his braking markers. He might have been thinking about his own pit strategy and then just you know, gone a little bit too deep on the brakes and not been able to get it turned in. Yeah, absolutely. Something he could have been thinking about and... Uh, Looks like Ian Ford is a big uh, big winner out of the pits. We were talking about him fueling uh, a little bit differently earlier. Now, only a little bit of a, a, a different in times for him and Sam Sutton there. Um, but he was about a second faster than uh, race leader Dane Warren. Um, so both of those guys have made up a little bit of an advantage there. And Ian Ford now right on the rear of that TTL eSports car. So he's now probably effectively jumped Brady Myers um, and is now moving himself into what I would think is effectively third position now. Not entirely the truth because something could still happen with Brady. Uh, he could pull out some really fantastic next few laps. The track temp could drop uh, or something. But uh, from general past experience, I would say that at the moment, um, these guys are fighting for second on the podium at the moment. So. Um, Ian Ford has done a great call there to come in with the rest of the guys up ahead of him. And a uh, little bit of a battle here um, between, I think that is Dane, Dane Warren just coming through traffic actually. So Dane Warren moves himself past Brenton O'Brien, who uh, I'm sure is going to give Dane plenty of racing room and stay out of the way, tuck himself in behind there and uh, just allow Dane to get on through and get on with the job. So now Brady Myers has come in uh, looks like a fairly good inlap from him, so we'll have to see the pit stop time. Standing time for uh, for Ian Ford and Sutton was 20, 21. 21 seconds. So we'll see what Brady Myers does here. And it's 21.4, so pretty much bang on with the other guys. How quickly can he get out of the lane? I don't think it's going to be fast enough. It's going to be very close, though. It's just going to be overspeed, though, for Ian Ford and the preferred line. Brady's going to give him just enough room 
to get by past Mount, down Mountain straight here, and it's not over for Ian Ford because he might just have to defend a little bit here or even go for a move on Sam Stun very late on the break. Surely there's contact, and there is just a little bit of a rub, but they keep it all together, and now Brady Myers might have a little bit of a look as Ian Ford just loses a little bit of momentum there, but great job from those two drivers to keep it on the track, and a little bit of a cheeky move there from Ian Ford. Very committed on the brakes there, and just managing for uh, all those guys to keep it together. Yeah, and I think when he gave, uh, when he gave Sam Sutton that little tap, he knew that it wasn't going to be a clean move. I think he just backed out of it, just gave Sam Sutton enough room to save that. But the body language of Ian Ford and his car after these pit stops, the Sam Sutton goes off wide and Ian Ford doesn't have enough room to get ahead before they go down the hill. But Sam Sutton's obviously under pressure now from Ian Ford. You stole the words completely out of my mouth, David. I mean, he is obviously uh, getting into some forced errors here, but um, luckily he's got his teammate behind him who's also going to be applying some pressure to Ian Ford who has just... Uh, not quite done what he needed to do off the exit of Forest Elbow there, which would have been really good for him. But now those three cars are fairly evenly spaced, so uh, it's not going to be too much going on into the chase, I would imagine. But you never know, there's got a little bit of traffic up ahead of them. Brett can just up the road, and uh, a couple of other cars that could come into play if they don't hit within uh, the next... Uh, or, in fact, it's probably just going to be Kananzi. But... Um, just noticed as well one of our main competitors, Jordan Ross, who was sitting and tied the uh, top five or close to the top five throughout points of this race is actually uh, out of contention. Not quite sure what happened there. I'm going to see if I can uh, go back and find out for you guys. But uh, Jordan Ross no longer in the car and is out of the server. So he definitely will not... Uh, be continuing in the rest of this race inside one more time griffin's band turn number two this time he's got a lot more overlap it's difficult to hold it on the outside there so ian ford has got the job done got himself ahead of those two ttl cars it's what he wanted to do the other lap wasn't quite close enough and this time he's got himself an extra car leg alongside made it work he's up into fifth place but with two cars ahead that need to pit that will be effective third place behind no, effective second place, my apologies, behind Dane Warren. Yeah, absolutely. So he's done an absolutely fantastic job there to make that work. Um, and uh, would expect nothing less from Ian Ford. Fantastic racer and uh, has a great team behind him as well. Um, word on Jordan Rocks, a little bit uh, unsure. He went into the pits and uh, never came out. So maybe he had some... Uh, some damage that needed to be repaired to that car that uh, he wasn't prepared to go along with and uh, has opted out as Sam Sutton just still trying that pressure to Ian Ford to try and bring something back out of this but uh, it's going to be pretty tough to do for those TTL guys Brady Myers though uh, has been running a strong race unfortunate for him to lose out in those pit stop uh, times but he's got to uh, make the right call to make at the right time to be in it to win it and you can just see in Ford a little bit defensive there coming back across to the racing line just as they uh, get into the final part of that braking zone there and carrying himself through the chase and uh, onwards to see if he can run down the uh, man of the hour Dane Warren who is uh, continuing to stride ahead just uh, up the road. Dylan's the yes. fastest car out on track, well he was until this lap, on the previous lap he was, and while this battling has been going on and Ian Ford's been trying to make his way through, McMillan's just been hunting them down, this is now a pack of four, and if Sam Sutton continues to hold up Brady Myers, then Brady Myers will have to contend with Thomas McMillan in a very short order. We did see McMillan fall off in the uh, second half of that stint though. So he's really going to have to get it done quickly as we uh, now see Scott Soloski and Daniel Williams on screen. It should be a fairly uh, fairly easy job there for Scott Soloski to make it down the inside at Hell Corner. He's going to have to maybe defend from uh, Daniel as they come down Mountain Straight though and Mountain is and uh, Daniel is going to go and uh, take the outside line whether Scott Soloski likes it or not. Whether he'll back out in the braking zone is yet to be determined. He doesn't. A little bit early on the turn in there for Daniel Williams and uh, wasn't able to carry uh, as much corner speed as he would have liked. He just had to back out there. 
he realized he turned in just a fraction too early and had to go for another stab at it, which uh, lost him the time in that corner. Ian Ford not getting away from these two TTL cars up the front. Good point you made though, David. Uh, Dane Warren, fastest lap 205.536 uh, on this stint so far. And uh, Thomas McMillan was a 205.538, so just two thousands between those guys. And Brady Myers lapping at about the 206s at the moment. So Ian Ford actually, despite passing Sam on that lap, was only two tenths slower than Dane. So nicely done. Now Wayne Burke, who has been out four laps longer than anyone else, is finally in the pits. And now a move on the teammates here. Looks like Brady Myers wants to get past Sam Sutton. And so he does. Brady Myers back into a, a podium position. And now McMillan's looking a little bit hungry as they come down into Murray's corner here. Not going to be able to do anything with it. We've seen McMillan use patience to his advantage throughout this race. Yeah, exactly. So I was wondering if there would be a TTL shuffle once Ian Ford got through. It, it wasn't immediate, and that, wasn't, that did not look like Sam Sutton letting Brady Myers through. But I think once Brady threw the nose to the inside, had a look... Sam Sutton wasn't going to fight it too hard against his teammate. And Wayne Burke, who said, who said, stayed out longest of anyone, freshest tires, has come out not too far behind this pack, just three seconds off. You said it, four laps fresher tires. And that could really make a big difference. Not so much in the... Not so much right now, but definitely in the closing stage of this of this race, probably the last five or six laps or so, that uh, could really make a big difference. Track temperature is still 29 degrees, um, which is still five degrees hotter than when we started with this evening. So um, that's pretty high, uh, pretty high amount of temperature in just uh, 40 odd minutes of race. So definitely conceivable that that could rise even further as we still do have another uh, 13 odd laps to go here as we uh, watch these fantastic looking TTL cars come down through the uh, through the dipper there and now down into Forest Elbow looking a little bit wayward on the entry into Forest Elbow there is Brady Myers gathers it back up and gets a nice exit though as he stares at the back of that uh, evolution racing team car of Ian Ford and Thomas McMillan looking at uh, Brady's teammate Sam Sutton just behind it's a great shot of those four cars there as they come down Conrod straight. Doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to do anything. Once you have a car, a, a train of cars like this, it's often very difficult uh, for the trailing cars to really do much. The guy who's second in line generally has the best chance to do anything. Third and fourth are uh, a little bit, little bit uh, hung out to dry in a sense because uh, the man up ahead of them has got all the speed, as much speed as they do, so it uh, doesn't really work out as well for overtaking. In Forward looking Is that very on around. Oh no, surely not. Doesn't I don't think so because he was the uh... I think uh I'm not sure, but we will get a replay of what get a replay was, of what that was because he's uh, in the right spot. Board. He's just gotten way oh too my much inside curb, goodness. lifting that thing up on the outside tires. He's very lucky that he managed to stop it turning before he hit the inside wall. Um Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, because you're about to go on a ride. Yeet! Wow, that, that was a big moment there for Wayne Burke, and uh, glad that he kept that all together because he could really have an impact on this race towards the end. Oh, and the TTL teammates are coming very close up the mound. This is going to be dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. McMillan looking around the outside. Going to be tough to hold it around there. He's going to have to back way out of it and lose a ton of speed subsequently. Well, he could have been a little more patient there and played that differently to his advantage, but he'll uh, know that for the next time that happens, should it happen. And these teammates uh, come a little bit more close together. It looks like Sutton has actually made his way past Brady Myers as well. Uh, so those guys trading places once again. So maybe team order is not necessarily in, uh, in effect here. And these guys are just racing pretty hard. And uh, they are getting very close to each other as Ian Ford just locks up runs very wide very close to that uh that wall on the exit of forest elbow there and there could be another move here going on between these ttl cars because they are looking very close and uh also in ford has a uh a man just a little bit up the road i think uh is that is that brendan o'brien just up ahead of them as well so 
Brendan O'Brien might uh, might help out his man here in any way that he can. Just might, you know, let Ian buy fairly easily and uh, make it a little more difficult for the guys behind. We'll see how it goes. Brian had a really long pit stop, 1 minute 44 seconds stationary, and that's what's put him a lap down now, unfortunately. Yeah, so um, very unfortunate for the big man, but uh, big man in spirit, might I say. Fantastic guy, Brenton O'Brien. Uh, always always uh, an absolute treasure to see. Um, but uh, we'll see if he helps his man out as uh, they come down mountain straight here. Still going to probably be another half a lap to a lap before they catch them. But uh, we can see that Ian Ford has not been able to shake these TTL cars much at all. And uh, he could definitely use any form of reprieve. And uh, that man up ahead could definitely be the man to do it. Sun's going to go for a late move on the cutting. A little bit of contact, surely. And uh, maybe a little bit of payback there for that bump and rub earlier at turn two. Now, come on, guys. Let's get it back in single file there because that is not going to work. Thank you. McMillan now looking around again. We saw him earlier looking around. And uh, will he be able to hold patience as a virtue here and make something out of it? He's got a good entry as they come through. McPhillamy now down into Skyline. And Ian Ford holds onto that position. McMillan looking strong. Very close to the rear of Brady Myers there. And oh, a little bit of a bump actually through the cutting unsettles Brady and that's going to really uh, throw things up in the air for this run down Forest Elbow and down Conrod straight as well. McMillan definitely in a much better position than he has been laps previous to get something done here. So we'll see if he can make something work. Ian Ford is also being followed very closely by Sutton. So a couple of uh, moves could go on here. We'll have to see if uh, any of that is going to come to fruition. Sutton looking... Ford defending, Sutton going to go to the outside line, yes he is, both of the uh, white cars there taking a healthy amount of curb as the TCL guys keep it off and uh, wave by a little bit of mechanical sympathy, Sam Sutton having a bit of a peek there and forcing Ian Ford just into a little bit of a defensive line, not ideal for exit speed which is what he would definitely want and he might come under a bit of pressure once again something just not close enough and he knows how important that exit is out of hell corner to get down mountain straight nice and smoothly and uh ian ford might just be getting a little bit of a toe now from uh from his team boss up ahead Brenton o'brien which will be helping him immensely although it might not be visual it'll uh, definitely be substantial in the mental field in uh in having him up ahead and that's a ttl card just running a little bit wide there as uh, McMillan definitely has the pressure cooker on the heat and he's uh, building up a lot of intensity behind these TTL cars right now. Now, this is where it gets dangerous for Brenton O'Brien because this is one of the fastest parts of the track. This is where true speed really shows who's fast and who's not. And these guys are going to catch him very quickly and he does a great job to stay out of the way of all those cars. Now, unfortunately, though, McMillan is going to suffer. And uh, Branson, I mean, to be fair, he couldn't have done much of a better job there to uh, stay out of the way and continue running his own race. So McMillan, as you can see, not too hindered there. And uh, he'll be able to recover some of that gap. He still has 10 laps to make the pass on these guys. And uh, it's pretty amazing that these guys have been uh, driving so uh, voraciously for the last 23 laps. Yeah, exactly. And as Ford, Sutton, Myers and McMillan fight, Wayne Burke was the fastest car on the circuit the lap before. He had that little mistake. He got plenty of airtime in the final corner, but he is closing it down just a little bit closer. Still got those fresher tyres, and there is no sign of the battle between Ian Ford and Sam Sutton finishing here. Ian Absolutely. Ford holding it to the inside a little bit to defend into the final corner. Sam Sutton had a look there earlier, maybe not seriously, but definitely keeping uh, his car in the forefront of Ian Ford's mind. And uh, in the background of our shot, you can see a man coming up on a charge as uh, Sam Sutton does go for a move down the inside. Now it's going to be a drag race. Sam's going to have to pull in now. Ian now has the uh, choice of which line he wants to take. He's going to park it half-heartedly on the inside line there, which is a uh, good strategy. Sam's going to come to the outside line. He's going to have to be very keen on the brakes, though. 
turns in a little bit early and he's going to put himself in the wall, surely! There's a little bit of a rub on the exit wall there, maybe. McMillan now going round the outside, going to carry that momentum, but he has to back out of it. Just wasn't quite there. And uh, Sutton just turned in a little bit early there to be going side by side through turn two. And uh, Ian Ford did uh, take pretty much the tightest line that he possibly could have. So Sutton going to have to uh, work his way back past his teammate and try something else out once again. But uh, as I was about to say, well, this is all going on in the background of our shot. Uh, Wayne Burke is there, ladies and gentlemen. He is right behind these guys. He has four lap pressure tires. He's got fuel to the end. And uh, he is a man who is definitely hungry for some points and a man who I previously tipped uh, could definitely win one of these iRacing V8 Supercar official championships should he uh, have the luck and the uh, and the ability to complete a full season. So definitely have to watch him for the next eight odd laps. Still plenty of racing to be done now. McMillan pretty much bump drafting Sam Sutton as they come down Conrod straight here and is he going to try and push him to the outside line? He's not. He's going to back out of it. So um, McMillan, I really would have tipped that he would have gone for something there. Nice, healthy amount of inside curb there as they come through the chase, but uh, not able to get the move done. Brady Myers is really tucked up on Ian Ford once again, still trying to apply plenty of, plenty of pressure and uh, hopefully suck his teammate back into this battle. Wayne Burke once again, fastest man on the track out of all the cars ahead of him by, uh, has to be set a substantial margin, four tenths of a second that time by, and uh, he is now within 1.1 second of this pack, so he's gonna be in this battle very quickly. Yeah, I imagine next time down Conrod Strait, he'll be within the draft range of Thomas McMillan. We did cut very quickly to Jackson Susan Harlow and Kyle Stokes, who are battling further back in the field, and they were tucked up right behind Mullen McMullen's. It was a battle for ninth through to 11th there, and this battle continues as well. So that's, uh, that spread itself out a little bit, but they were all stuck together through the chase last time by. Ian Ford has Brady Myers behind him over the top of the mountain this time around, though. There's less than a car length there. Now there is, because Brady Myers gets a little bit of oversteer, Zach. Yeah, he's um, looking like he's pushing that TTL Esports machine to the limit as he gets very close to the, uh, to the wall there. And um, all these cars have been absolutely charging all evening and uh wow we've had a little bit of a spike in the temperature as well so 31 degrees track temp now um is really really quite hot so quite a few of these guys are uh are gonna have to worry about these tires and wayne burke's looking at a really good position at the moment as well and uh just having a look a little bit further back like Zach Baker and Brendan Jackson, Brett Cananzi are all in a little bit of a battle at the moment. Brett Cananzi looking very hot on the heels behind those guys. Up at the front though, it's two by two by two. And uh, Bra oh, Brady Myers, he's looped it. He's lost it in front of his teammate who's actually collected him and has to take to the inside of the chase there. Now, will he have to get a soda? Wayne Burke's gonna maybe come through on the outside of Thomas McMillan here. And he's going to go the long way round. McMillan can keep it nice on the exit there. He may just keep that position. Wow. So that's a big changer for this race. Um, Brady Myers, too hot. Into the chase. Get it on replay. Here we come. So they come down into the chase. Laid on the brakes. Went to the inside there. And, oh, just, just pinched it. And, uh... Unfortunately, got tagged there by his teammate. Everyone else managed to get through relatively unscathed. We'll get on board with you now, ladies and gentlemen. Very late on the brakes, and it looks like he braked at about the same point. Just tried to carry it. There was even a little bit of a bump there uh, to Ian Ford as he tried to get that move done as well, which I think is what, in the end, uh, actually spun him around. Having a look now at Kyle Stokes and uh, Jackson Susan Harlow. Kyle Stokes moved uh, over to Evolution Racing Team recently from Synergy Sim Racing, where he's uh, been doing some good things. And Susan Harlow, and uh, sorry, we'll just cut to Wayne Burke because he's just made a great move on the inside of Thomas McMillan, who's going to push him all the way to Scotland. Go down the inside. Come on, guys, there's contact. 
There's more contact! McMillan's in the wall! Big time! As is Wayne Burke, and that is gonna kill the race. Oh, and Brady Myers comes in! This is huge! There's gonna be more cars coming down the mountain in a moment! Michael Cracknell, Corey Preston! Oh my god, that is the worst place that you could end up in! Suslin Harlow as well! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, guys, that is just absolutely tragic, especially for TTL Esports, and that all kicked off with Thomas McMillan and Wayne Burke. We'll get a replay for you guys. McMillan just looking a little unsettled over the top. Bit of a hip and shoulder there, but a great move by Wayne Burke, forcing it down on the inside, nice and tough. And this is where it started going a little bit right, a little bit ambitious there. From uh, McMillan, McMillan. Oh. He is over the top of the yeah. hill. He tried to hold that line and he just could not. But, and then uh, we've seen, my goodness, they've oh. sat off in that very difficult the second to see. Problem, the second problem, though, he rolled back onto the track. He, he could have he could have stayed on the brakes and stayed to the outside of the track, and that's what collected um, Brady Myers. So that's a really bad incident for a lot of drivers there. Um, so, oh, shocking. So sad to see that. We'll just get a bit of a, um, we'll just reset and see what we've got going on now because that's taken out a massive portion of our top 10 in this race. Uh, Dane Warren leads by 8.2 seconds now. Absolutely laughing out the front. Ian Ford for Evolution Racing Team in second. Uh, Sam Sutton takes that final podium position at the moment. So we're just watching Michael Cracknell and Corey Preston. Michael just start uh, locking up a bit into the cutting there. So Wayne Burke is now in the pits. I oh no, Wayne, did Wayne Burke? He made it through. Burke is in the pits, pardon me. So uh, Michael Cracknell is in fourth position, uh, which is amazing. For Michael Cracknell, so fantastic job for him. So Corey Preston in fifth position now, uh, attacking like crazy, and and Marlon McMullen started 16th, now finds himself in sixth position. Uh, so this is really, uh, really mixed up the the top of the the grid here. And uh, Cost Stokes, Brian, Bull, and uh, now Chris Coxhead making up your top 10. So uh, when the mountain bites, it bites hard, and it's bitten hard for. I think four or five of our drivers this evening in that one incident, which was, uh, yeah, very unfortunate for quite a few drivers there. Yeah, so what's that taken out of the equation is Brady Myers, McMillan, Burke, uh, Jackson, Susan, Harlow, all removed, and that's what's elevated Michael Cracknell, Corey Preston, Mullen, Mullen, Kyle Stokes, those lot into uh, looking at a solid top five finish potentially. Absolutely, and that's also, uh, I could possibly have some, uh, I mean, we're still very early in the season, but a nice strength of field this evening could see that uh, really benefit uh, Dane Warren, especially in the championship standings. Preston just lost two positions as uh, he's going door to door with Carl Stokes. We'll just stay on board here with Preston and uh, Get a replay of that momentarily for you. Just see if he's able to fight anything back. It looks like that's job done, though. It looks like he's uh doesn't have quite as many ponies under the bonnet of that Ford Falcon as uh, Stokes has in his ERT Commodore there. And uh, looks like it was a little bit of a battle there with uh, Crackers. And he just lost out there to McMullen and just really poor speed down that... Uh, Bound down that straight there and uh, just lost out to Stokes. So two positions in two corners lost there for Corey Preston, who was sitting in fifth and uh, attacking Michael Cracknell. Yeah, but, second uh, time he's gone in deep on the breaks into the final corner for Corey Preston. So just a... Oh, a there's another accident. ...out there in the, uh, in the cutting. And thankfully, track's not blocked this time. They get going. But Brendan Jackson and Brett Cananzi... Both of them looking very, very damaged, and you have to assume they've come together somewhere. Zach, here's our replay. Yeah, we'll get a replay and see exactly what transpired there. So very tight battle thing. That's Zach Baker just up ahead of these guys here in the number 20 car. who got a little bit wide on uh, a little bit squirrely on the X there. knanzi has gone for the opportunistic move down the inside. And oh, a little hard to tell. 
very you yeah, well, oh on oh, oh, I think that was McMillan who's just been punted again. I think that yeah, was another ben angle. Smith. Oh sorry. Uh possibly. Cast six. I think that is McMillan. And oh, it's yeah, Hins. looks Oh it's Hins. Oh, that's very unfortunate. So it looks like um both of those guys were possibly expecting uh, a little more track to be used by both. And uh, they met in the middle, as we have seen once or twice this evening, uh, and is something that happens in racing very frequently. So uh, nothing new there. Unfortunate for both drivers. Luckily, they uh, didn't really do too much damage otherwise in the process. We do take you now up to position number two and three because this battle is going to rage on until the very end. Sam Sutton and Ian Ford fighting for the second and third positions in this race. The last two spots on the podium and uh, that TTL car has held that second position for the majority of this race but uh, just after the pit stop space Ian Ford fantastic down the uh, on those TTL cars and has been doing very strongly ever since. Not strongly enough to pull himself off away from Sam Sutton. And in fact, Sutton has gone from having a bit of a gap and uh, clawing that back to uh, sev on several occasions. So doing a good job is Sam Sutton. Definitely not out of that uh, of that battle. But Marlon McMullen has made his way past Michael Cracknell. And now Kyle Stokes is looking uh, quite racy on the back of Crackers as well. He might have something to say about uh, uh, where he's going to finish in this race very shortly. Also, but he can get a nice exit as they come out of Forest Elbow here. Marlon McMullen is uh, probably one of the biggest movers and shakers, uh, if not the biggest. Uh, he's one of the, for sure. Up 12 positions. The only people that can say they're doing better at the moment are uh, Jamie McKnight and Thomas Hins, who are up 14 positions each, respectively. Another person up 12 is James Duckworth, who has moved himself from 29th up into 17th. But Marlon from 16th on the grid up into fourth at the moment. Absolutely fantastic job. Uh, and would expect nonetheless from a uh, series champion as he is. And Michael Cracknell defending heavily here from Kyle Stokes. Fear it might be coming to a close shortly though for Crackers. Kyle Stokes has been looking very strong these last few laps and uh, it's going to go for a bit of an over under here. Go for the nice X and he's done a great job to just slide the car very nicely but straight and just rocket himself out of hell corner there. He's going to have to go the long way around. Does look like he's just starting to creep past Mike Cracknell. He's going to have to be brave on the brakes. We've seen people turning in too early. Can he turn in? Oh! A little bit of a lock up as he uh, got on the initial application there and just gathers it all up. And uh, luckily he'll have another opportunity, hopefully, to uh, to get past Michael Cracknell, but uh, very dicey there for a moment for Pilot Stokes. Yeah, exactly. He locked up those rear tires big time and it's so, so difficult to go around the outside of turn two there. I've commentated GT3's, Pro Mazda's, V8 supercars here, and none of those cars can, can make it work around the outside the way the camber of that corner is. You really, really want to get and hold the inside line into that corner. Yeah, I think uh, I think the only place that really works is in multi-class racing. You can sometimes get some pretty cool... Uh, some of the LMP cars can uh, go around GT cars there pretty nicely. Looks like Thomas Tins has just lost a spot to Brett Cananzi now. I'm not surprised by that at the moment because uh, Thomas Hens did cop. He was the man we were talking about, copped a whack from, uh, I think, it, uh, who Kinans he was battling with at the time, uh, Brendan Jackson. Uh, copped, so Hensie copped a hit from Jackson, and that car might be suffering a little bit. He might just be limping at home as we only have uh, four laps remaining in this race at the moment, or three laps remaining now. Ian Ford and Sutton still going hard. Ian Ford looking like those rear tyres on his car are uh, pretty well spent. We're up to 32 degrees now on track. Air temps stayed pretty much the same all throughout. This track has just been baking all after, all, all morning, I should say. And uh, track temperature has risen almost 10 degrees since we started in the server. And uh, lap times are definitely reciprocating that 
Fastest man on the track at the moment is Sam Sutton, actually. A 206.371. Actually, a very uh, respectable time given the conditions at the moment. Even our late race leader, uh, Dane Warren, he's only lapping in a 267. His fastest lap is a 205.0. So 1.7 seconds is the difference between the fastest lap and the car lap of this race, uh, which is a fairly substantial uh, difference there. But it has to be said, uh, the difference in uh, in times and temp versus the, the temperature difference has seemed to reduce slightly uh, with this new day-night transition. So while the times are going to be extended with the higher temperatures, it's not going to probably be as dramatic as people who are familiar with the iRacing service are were before. Just having a close look now at uh, Corey Preston and uh, Ryan Borg. As they come down through Skyline and through the Dipper now. And Brian Borg has been hunting down on Corey Preston. He's been struggling the last few laps. See him running wide a couple of times and losing a couple of positions. And he's actually fallen off Kyle Stokes very considerably. He's lost five, he's five seconds off Kyle Stokes, who he was just battling with a handful of laps to go. And it was two seconds slower on that last lap. And in fact, he's got to have some sort of damage to that car. Nothing Brian in this Borg has, Yeah, Brian Borg has just absolutely gone flying past. So don't know if he's uh, suffered some minor engine damage or if he's got a bit of aero on there, which is uh, not suiting him too well. But he is uh, traveling at uh, the... Stokes and Kraken. Wishing, I'm sure... Yeah, having a great battle now as Carl Stokes now switches to the inside. And I fear this is where it all comes done for Michael Cracknell. Down the inside goes Crackers, though, true to uh, true to himself, holding it tough around the outside and keeping that momentum going. So Cracker is, is holding it tough. And uh, he's previously an Evolution Racing Team man, now private. Team. Sure, he's uh, holding his heart in his mouth up a little bit trying to keep himself ahead of those guys and Kyle Stokes we've seen it time and time again just a little bit early on the turn there just rubbing the rear quarter paddle of Michael Cracknell as they come up through turn number two so Crackers has only got two laps to go now and uh, I'm, I'm believing more and more uh, that he's actually going to be able to hold on to uh, fifth position which would be absolutely astounding for him uh, up from 11th place having a look at uh, Brennan Jackson and that Valkyrie sim racing car looking car when uh, all the panels are on it unfortunately he's uh, missing a couple this evening and uh, subsequently missing a little, little bit of straight line speed and has to give up positions to James Duckworth and Greg Sharp Duckworth uh, still plus 14 positions as uh, he's closing in on Thomas Hens at a rate of about two and a half seconds a lap but with only two laps to go might not be able to get there in the end. But who out of these two guys is going to take it home? Ian Ford and Sam Sutton. It's been a very interesting race between these guys so far. And uh, they've only got one lap to sort it out. So Sam Sutton could definitely uh, chuck something very last minute out, uh, out the window here. These guys haven't been afraid to rub doors a couple of times throughout this race. So uh, we'll have to see how this all pans out. But... Uh, other than, uh, other than these guys, I think Crackers, Stokes, got Corey Preston and Chris Coxhead are actually very close to each other at the moment as well. That could be something that uh, changes around for the end of this race for sure. As uh, Coxhead is right on the back of Preston. He's looking all over the place. That car's looking very wayward. Here comes Carl Stokes once again down the end at Hell Corner. Crackers round the outside once again now he has the preferred line he can just hold it down the inside there as coxhead does a similar uh, goes for a similar on uh Corey preston there now carl stokes late on the brakes and a wide turn in mate can you do it not this time gonna try and tuck in back once again and go for another spot on the track it's not gonna be easy though coxhead on the other hand has gotten it done nice and cleanly they even get to the corner. A little bit of a look there from Carl Stokes. A cheeky look at the cutting there. But uh, not going to be able to do anything. Michael Cracknell, very experienced, spared supercar. And uh, definitely wiser to a few of the tricks that these young blokes have been throwing at him this evening. And still managing at the time 
being, but Kyle Stowe's it's got to be said, he's looking very, very strong this lap over the top of the hill. Michael Craig not looking so good on the turn in, really carrying a nice exit boot. Come on, guys. Not again. Not through Skyline this time, please. Kyle Stokes backs out, but once again, and we'll have to try and do it. I think down into the chase. Summon Ford now coming into the chase for the final time. It's not going to happen for them. And uh, it is going to happen for a man this evening, Dane Warren, who has just absolutely dominated this race start to finish. From flag to flag, Dane Warren takes out round one, season one, 2019 Racing Fair Supercars official. Ian Ford comes home in a very respectable second. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Carl Stokes goes through. But is he going to hold around the outside through the chase? Very close. Michael Cracknell comes back on the inside. Very close between these guys. They're going to rub it as they come down into Murray's corner. And I think that Crackers is going to be able to hold this one. Goes for an under under. Over under does Carl Stokes. It's going to be a drag race to the one. And I think Crackers has just held on for the fifth position. And what a fantastic he did. And uh, 27 separate those guys across the line. So... Very good racing from all of those guys. We still have some uh, drivers coming across the line. I don't think uh, anyone else is really too close to each other. These guys on screen, James Duckworth and Greg Sharp, are the uh, closest men to be having a position change. But Duckworth has been looking very strong. As has Sharp, uh, albeit with a bit of a spin early, he's actually done a great job to recover uh, so well from that, albeit with a little bit of a help from uh, quite a large amount of attrition that we've seen this evening as uh, those guys finish a very long race this evening. For Dane Warren, it was one hour, nine minutes and 57 seconds. And uh, for everyone else, it was just a little bit long. He was the man who was untouchable, unbeatable. I'm not even sure he had to defend uh, a single on a single occasion and uh, takes it out flag to flag for All-Star Motorsports, does Dane Warren. Ian Ford, a podium position. First time we've seen him in a V8 Supercars official race in a while for Mr. Ford. So great to see him get a good result. And uh, another man who is uh, starting to make a return to this series and coming back with quite some good form. Sam Sutton takes out the final position on the podium. Marlon McMullen, another man, previous champion, worked himself from 16th up in a fourth. Great drive. For Marlon and Jay McMullen and Michael Cracknell and Kyle Stokes putting on a fantastic show to the very end, coming home in fifth and sixth, respectively. Brian Borg having a, an eventful race, coming home in seventh. And uh, Chris Coxhead, another mover and shaker. He started quite low in the grid, 18th he did, and uh, made himself up into eighth. Corey Preston dropped uh, down the order a little bit from where he started, finished ninth after struggling very heavily with his car towards the end of that race. And uh, Scott Solosky moved himself up into 10th position. Then we had uh, Jamie McKnight finishing in position number 11, Zach Baker in 12th, Brett Cananzi. Uh, I think he started in 13th and finished in 13th, so a net result of even for Mr. Brett Cananzi this evening. Thomas Hins did a good job, as I thought he would, making his way through the field, albeit with a few bumps and rubs from some of his competitors. James Duckworth up a bunch of positions as well for 15th. Greg Sharp Matt came home in 16th position. Uh, 17th position went to Brennan Jackson, who had a bit of a tangle uh, earlier in the race. Daniel Williams, another man who uh, got involved in a bit of biffo, came home in 18th position. Brett Loxton, Unfortunate incident earlier for him. Carried a bit of damage where he had to uh, get fixed in the pits. He ended up 19th. And the last of our finishers on the lead lap, who uh, we didn't unfortunately, didn't unfortunately, pardon me, see much of this evening. Elliot Smith, come back, come back out next time, Elliot. We'll see if we can get you some more screen time, buddy. But uh, the rest of our finishers this evening, I think Brenton O'Brien, Guy Leach, and Craig Jones were still circulating. Uh, around for the end of that race. But uh, the first of our non-finishers with a massive incident uh, coming through the dipper section of the track and skyline, Wayne Burke, Brady Myers also got taken out with that one, as did Thomas McMillan, who was uh, the man racing with Wayne, a little bit ambitious as they came through skyline there. Jackson Suslin Harlow, another one to lose out. 
because of that incident. So two TTL cars, uh, an ASM car, and uh, and also one Burke on his uh, debut for his new team, not uh, not having the best night out. David Miller as well so came to some problems. Jordan Ross seemingly uh, just uh, decided that he'd had enough, although he could have had some damage. And uh, Benjamin J. Smith and Riley Blythe were also out uh, relatively early in this race, although everyone completed at least uh, 11 laps of this race, which is um, definitely very good to see. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for joining us uh, on both the iRacing Esports Network and SimSpeed TV this evening. Uh, if you could go to uh, both channels, smash the subscribe button, hit that little bell as well, and uh, chuck a like on, uh, on any of the videos that you watch. And uh, also, if you thought, uh, if you have any comments about uh, the race this evening uh, or if you have any suggestions as to things you'd like to see in the future, always remember to uh, shout out a comment in that comment section. We're uh, not going to bite you and uh, we're always looking for some great feedback and uh, also to hear what you guys are thinking as well. Um, we will not be returning on uh, SimSpeed TV until the new year. We won't be returning on the iRacing uh, V8 Supercars official series until, I believe, the uh, 7th of January, which is uh, round four of this championship, which will come from uh, the historic Oran Park Raceway in, uh, in New South Wales, which is always uh, good fun, nice little short track, uh, very easy to make mistakes and uh, short little runs offer good overtaking opportunities. So definitely something to uh, to tune into. But from SimSpeed TV, we are done for the year. We wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas, a happy holiday period for everyone and, uh, and a fantastic new year. And we look forward to uh, bringing you tons more content in the new year, completely reinvigorated and, uh, and better than ever. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much to David Haynes for joining me in the commentary booth this evening and to Jay Kennedy for pressing the buttons all throughout the year. It's uh, been an absolutely fantastic year for us here at uh, V8s Online and now SimSpeed TV. We wish you all the best and uh, we'll see you fresh and new for 2019. Thank you very much. a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.